Hello and welcome to the Havoc Medicine Channel. My name is Pat Early. I'll be your host. I'm an emergency medicine PA, longtime mountain rescue member and former mountain guide. Here at Havoc Medicine, we talk about our med kits that we sell. We also do telehealth wilderness medicine consultation. And then we're just going to do general case studies and wilderness medicine informational videos. So as always, this is not formal training. You need to use your own brain, licensure, and education to guide your medical decisions in the field. And we're not liable for any of those. So let's get to it. So today we're going to be going over our assault medical kit. It's the smallest of our three medical kits that we currently offer. So we have the assault, the mission, the expedition. Uh, the assault's my personal favorite. It's kind of my daily driver. It's the one that I'm going to put in my day pack or for shorter trips. As you can see, we use just basic Patagonia black hole cubes. Uh, I feel, felt like I couldn't really improve on this design. They're water resistant. They're pretty durable and they have nice compartmentalization inside. So I'm going to take you through this kit and tell you what's inside. So as we open it, uh, this particular bag doesn't totally open up. These two both do fully open up in a fan fold style. So at the top of this kit, the first thing you're gonna see is our tools and survival module here. So I'm gonna go through all the contents of this with you. So the first thing we have is a pulse oximeter. Uh, basic vital signs are important in the field. The pulse and oxygen saturation, those are the main two things I, I like to worry about and track. Most of us don't carry a blood pressure cuff or stethoscope in the field just because they're large and they don't have many uses. So, you know, based off the information that gives me, I can make some good medical decisions in the field. Uh, we have some small trauma shears. They're obviously really small. Um, you can't use these with gloves on, but they're going to cut through clothes, which is really the main function of trauma shears, and they work great and they're small. So then we have rolled up duct tape, 10 foot paracord, a really nice black diamond flare headlamp that has both red and white as well as strobe functionality. So I wouldn't want to use this as my daily headlamp because it's just not that bright. But in order to get you out of a bad situation, this is going to be the perfect, the perfect bet. We do have some waterproof storm resistant matches. There's 10 of them in here with a few strike plates as well and they're in this little waterproof bag. I have some general tweezers for splinters and things like that, a safety whistle, and then a mylar blanket. And they come in this little bag there to keep them organized. So that is our survival tool module there. Next thing we have is a pill case. I like to carry a hard pill case even in my small kit. You know, they do sell those pre-packaged over-the-counter medications like Tylenol and Advil. Um, I find that those get wet, they get crushed, they're not usable. So I like to have this tin compartmental, the tin compartment uh, pill holder. You can label them, it keeps your pills dry, it keeps them uh, not crushed. It works great. And then moving down here, we have some critical interventions. So a NPA 28 French nasal trumpet. It's pre-lubed, so all you have to do is break open the bag, it's already lubed up put it in the nose, uh, protect that airway. We don't carry OPAs in any of our kits. Um, I just feel like you can get the same thing done with an NPA and the patient doesn't have to, you know, lack a gag reflex, which if you're dealing with a patient in the field that doesn't have a gag reflex, it's gonna be a bad day. You can manage them, but you can still do it with an NPA. The next thing in here I wanna show you, we have a face shield. Um, in both of the smaller kits, the Assault and the Mission, we just have face shields. In the bigger kit, we have a pocket BVM. It's actually a full-size BVM that collapses down into a small case. They just don't fit in these kits. Um, and it's kind of a single-use item. And then down in the bottom of the kit, we have a 10-blade scalpel. Uh, you can do a lot with that. You can enter into the chest for pneumothorax if you have the training to do that. Um, you know, other general purposes, but it's small. It's easily packable. Sealox granules to help with massive hemorrhage. Um, you know, I like the granules because they pack down really small. Uh, they're affordable. There are hemostatic gauzes out there that are pretty expensive. I just prefer the granules. You can put it into the wound, then you can pack over that. Um, it tends to work pretty well. And then we have a Pneumodart. Um, it's a 14 gauge pneumothorax decompression needle. These are great to have. They're really small um, and you can truly save somebody's life in the field if you decompress their tension pneumothorax. Obviously that requires special training. And then as far as wound care goes, we're gonna go through all these modules. You'll see everything's organized in modules in here. So we have uh, some Curlex type wrap. It's pretty thick. 
that's good for larger wounds, wounds that are bleeding a lot. A triangular bandage cravat, um, good for orthopedic, shoulder, upper extremity injuries, works great for anything like that. And then we have a self-adherent wrap. Um, a lot of people call it Coban. This is not Coban brand, but same deal. So that's nice to have. We don't have an ACE bandage in here because it kind of serves the same purpose as this. Um, and I'd rather have this over just an ACE bandage. The bigger kits do have ACE bandages in them as well as the self-adherent wrap. And then we have two pairs of gloves, non-sterile. Then we'll go into our major wound care kit. So this is for wounds that need a little bit more attention in the field, uh, more than just a band-aid. So in this kit, we have a combine ABD pad for larger bleeds, two non-adherent Telfa pads. And then we have three by threes and two by twos. These are non-sterile, but they're clean. Okay, we package them in house and then heat seal them. So these are not gonna be sterile. Um, you know, we can we can go into sterility in the backcountry all we want, and I'll probably do that on a future episode, but it's really impossible to maintain sterility in the field. What we're looking for is a clean wound, not a sterile wound. If you're in the woods, you know, and you have, let's say that this is sterile. Once you open it and you're in the field, it's no longer sterile, okay? So I felt like I could get more bang for your buck putting these in these heat, heat sealed bags um, just for, for more wound care. So that's what we did. So we have zero form petroleum gauze dressings. These are awesome to keep the wound kind of moist, um, promotes healing. I use those all the time in my daily practice in the ER. And then two strips of K-tape. So kinesiology tape works awesome for blister prevention um, or anything else that needs to be taped with, a, with less friction. So that's our major wound care pack. We have our minor wound care packs pretty much band-aids. So small band-aids, finger band-aids, and then larger band-aids, as well as a couple uh, hydrocolloid blister band-aids. So I like the hydrocolloid bandages once your blister's open. Um, if it's closed, then you can use the K-tape, but I wouldn't put anything adherent over an open blister. It's gonna really hurt to take it off. Then we have wound closure. So in here we have one pack of Steri strips, and then we have tincture benzoin, which if you're not familiar with Steri strips, you really wanna put down some kind of adhesive like tincture of benzoin or mastosol or else this, the stereo trip's just gonna fall right off. So we do bring one pack of the tincture of benzoin in with this. And then we also have some liquid skin tissue adhesive in there for some smaller cuts. Um, you know, we're gonna go over wound closure in the wilderness a little bit more thoroughly on more videos, but it's kind of a, um, you know, it's a sticky topic. A lot of people don't like to close wounds in the backcountry. Um, it's kind of romanticized. People are like, yeah, I'm going to stitch up this wound. But a lot of times you can just be trapping infection inside of those wounds because it's really hard to get a nice clean wound out in the backcountry. Sometimes it's best to keep it open. Sometimes it makes sense to close it. Um, you know, if you're trained to do that, that's great. You think it's the best decision. Um, but, you know, as far as this small kit, our wound closure is pretty, pretty minimal. We have skin prep. This is going to have al alcohol wipes. It's also going to have sting relief wipes. We have some uh, antibacterial and hydrocortisone creams in there as well, just for general uh, wound care skin prep. We have our head, eyes, ears, nose, throats, pretty small in this small kit. So there's just a couple ampules of saline and a nasal OB tampon. It's actually just a normal um, tampon for, for feminine use, but it's small enough that you can put it up in the nose. No problem if you need to pack a nosebleed. And then a couple of the uh, cotton tip swabs to remove foreign bodies from the eye, things like that. So that's that one. And then we have our, um, I call this the heat and hypoglycemia module. So it kind of has everything that we need for those situations. So the first thing you're gonna see in here is the transcend glucose. It's just like the normal glucose you would use for hypoglycemia. It's just in a, it's in a nice package there. We have water purification and flocculation granules. So this will purify and also flocculate, meaning that it will take out the sediment from water that is not clear, like Colorado River muddy water. This works great for that. And it does both of them in one pack. We have chamois butter, which is for chafing, things like that. It actually is kind of meant for females. Of course, it works for males too, but it has the proper pH. So if you're using this in the vaginal area externally, it's not gonna mess with the vaginal pH. Emergency sunscreen. And then we have some trioral rehydration salts, which are WHO recommended, work great for dehydration. So that is everything in this kit. As you can see, it's 
quite a bit of stuff for such a small package. Um, you know, this is kind of the smallest kit I would want to carry on a daily basis. Uh, the reason we made one of these small kits was because, you know, if you have bigger kits, that's great. You have everything you want in those and more, but are they small enough to where you're going to carry it on a daily basis? Probably not. So this is going to be my, my daily, my, my daily bag. You know, if I'm going on a day trip, a night or two with a couple people, this is what I'm going to bring because it's light. It weighs about one and a half pounds um, and it works great for that. So hopefully this changes what you want to put in your own med kit. We do sell these kits at havocmed.com. So if you want to go check that out, feel free to do that like and subscribe. And we're going to go over the bigger med kits in our next videos. So stay tuned for that. All right. Thanks guys.